Hi there, welcome to the Future of Teamwork podcast. My name is Dane Grunewald, CEO of Huddle 3 Group. And I'm glad to have Dave Lemkul joining me today from Seamless AI. Welcome, Dave. Hi, Dane. How are you today? Awesome. Awesome. Like I was saying to you earlier, it's, uh, it's good to be connected after about 18 months of busyness through the back end of COVID. It is, man. It's, it's amazing how time flies. Like I remember talking way back and then, you know, I really appreciate you reaching out and, you know, inviting me here. It's going to be fun. I think it's going to be lots of fun. And uh, it's been cool following some of the content that you've been creating. And, you know, from when we first started talking, hearing about your experiences with, with teamwork, uh, you know, from your early days, military, through, through staffing, through software, maybe you could give us a little bit more um, of a story around your background just as an introduction. Yeah, my story is unique, um, you know, but it's a, it doesn't take a linear path, that's for sure. But, you know, so I did ROTC in, in college and I, I always said I'll go to the military um, until it's not fun. Well, nine years later, um, you know, I was still having fun. But I decided um, that I wanted to come out into corporate. I, I'd always enjoyed business. I always wanted to do it and came out and I went into staffing. I did staffing for a year and, you know, the grass is always greener. I was a, I was a young relatively, I didn't really know what I was trying to find my feet under me in the corporate world in terms of what I wanted to do after the military, which is a, a common thing. And I went into project management and I did that for seven, eight years. And mm-hmm. I literally woke up one day and I said, I do not want to do subcontracts anymore. I do not want to write another RFP anymore. And I called my old boss, who was my VP of sales. He was, and he got promoted to COO. And I said, Hey, you know, you're in staffing. Is there any, you know, what do you have for me? I want to go back into sales. And he laughed and he goes, Sure, I got a spot for you. I got great. And he goes, It's with us. And he brought me back. So eight years later, seven years later, I came back to the same company and I was with, you know, account executive. I came in, I was relatively, older, I'd say, you know, I was like 37, 38 at the time. And then I spent 10 years in staffing. I never thought I'd really leave. I, I still love it deep down. And I came across, you know, we're using software in the office. And uh, one day I said, you know what? I said, these guys got something going on. And I, I called up and I said, hey, can I interview? And they kind of laughed and they said, wow, have you sold software? And I go, no. And they go, well, yeah, let's talk. And, and that was about it. Three weeks later, I was over here and I've been with Seamless AI now for, for two years. And you came in, I took a step back, if you will. I went back to the account executive role. Now I'm into a sales director role, you know, leading a team of four or five folks. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I, and I love, I love the, there's a theme here. Yeah, you said it's not a straight line, which I, which I think is, you know the best the best stories are not straight lines mm. um, but there's a theme here that you team you intentionally pick which team you want to be on including calling seamless ai and saying hey i want to interview i want to be on your yeah. team so so that's interesting you know when it comes to picking teams you want to be a part of how have you tended to define you know what what are the attributes of a good team or or the definition of good teamwork I have to trust, I have to trust the people that I'm with um, Mm -hmm. and they have to trust each other. You know, I think that's a major element of, that's the first word that comes to my mind when people say teamwork and they go, what do you, you know, what do you think about? And I always go trust because we're going to make mistakes. We're, we're not going to agree We're there's going to be highs and lows in this journey together. And we're going to have to trust each other that we're in this together and we're, when you say something of, of, of a different point of view, I trust it's coming from a place of, you know, helping the team and not a self, you know, you out for yourself, right? I'm trusting yeah. that you have the best interest of everybody at heart, even though it's a, a disagreement of, of sort. Um, so that's, you know, that's number one. Number two is I have to believe in kind of what the team's mission is. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so real easy for me, if you take a look at who I was associated with, really up until Seamless, it always had a military element. I was in the military, obviously, but, but then I was, you know, the staffing firm was helping military veterans transition and as a defense contractor, obviously. So yeah. up until now, it's always been that that link, that element, um, you know, but it's always believing in your mission and believing in, you know, kind of what you wake up for every day as as part of that team. Why are we all, you know, why are we doing this? You know, what's our... Yeah. You know, what's our goal? So those are the those are two big things. If I believe in the mission of the the team, and I think the team has a good trust, I trust them, they trust me. You're all in this together. Then I think those are the those are the two big things for me. I like that. And and you you finished on that word together. When you've got trust and you've got a shared mission, then there's a real sense of togetherness in that mm-hmm. team. So yeah, I think that's a that's a key part of the cement. Yeah. 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 I mean, and that's a good way to put it because there's going to be tough times. There's going to be times yeah. that there's going to be times that are, you know, there's highs and lows and there's everything in between. And, um, you got, you got to have a common belief. You got to have a common goal. And I think that's a huge element of it. And you can look at mission statements. Yeah. But it's really the leadership on that team. That's going to, you know, put into words and have feeling behind that mission statement. Yeah. Mission statements are great, yeah. but what, what's behind it, you know, and, and, you know, can you vocalize it? And I think that's a, that's a big piece. The leadership that I've been with that has really galvanized a team can take a, a mission statement and vocalize it. And everybody goes, yep. Okay. got it. Now I can, you know, now I can, you know, it's real to me now that I hear it and I believe in it. So, yeah. Okay. You know, you said it, you go through tough times and running sales teams. I've always, one of my old bosses used to say it's champagnes and champagne and razor blades. (laughs) You're you're either on a super high or you're on a super low. And uh, I've seen some really neat posts. I think there was one post in particular you put out there on LinkedIn kind of saying, Hey, this is my team. And you know, they're working hard to, to bring our product to you, treat them with respect, treat them with kindness. Otherwise, I'm going to get on the phone to you. I thought that was a great, great post, great leadership, particularly creating that trust, having each other's back. You don't see enough of that, particularly in the sales industry. So I love the authenticity. I love the, uh, the toughness for the team. I thought that was cool. Where, where did that come from? Was that just heartfelt or is it something you've seen before from from others whether it's in military uh, or an industry a little bit of both a little bit of both like you know i i'm the elder statesman at the you know at the company i, I you know i always kind of joke with the reading glasses on and stuff and you know i have tough skin i don't really care yeah. what you say or do or call me or hang up on me it really does not bother me right i i i've been around this block there's not you know i I always kind of talk to my kids and I go, you know, is it, is it really that bad? Right. I mean, we're healthy. We're, yeah. we have a roof over our head, right. Is it really that bad? No. But when you kind of pick on my, you know, on my younger folks, you know, coming in who've been around for about a year and they're doing their best and they're learning and it probably, you know, it probably wasn't the best call. It probably wasn't the best opening. But yeah. it doesn't take much to say I'm not interested. You know, it doesn't take that much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And in my opinion, if you're going to do that to them, well, that's fine. Well, then have a conversation with me. But yeah. you're not going to just pick on them and, and and you know, walk away. And I get it. You don't have to take my phone call. I get it. But at the same time, you know, the the conversation, I didn't think it was funny. The reaction to that post, I did, I did not expect. Yeah, I at all. It was just something I was like, you know what? I was like, I want to put this out there because you know what? You know, in my mind, it wasn't a leadership post. It was a, hey, come on. If you take a cold call, just say I'm not interested and hang up. To me, that was it. But the reaction I got was all about the leadership. It was all about teamwork. And even the person on my team who was an SDR, so I have a little bit of interaction with, but not a whole lot. They 
messaged me and said, man, I really appreciate that. And I think yeah. that's when it hit me that it wasn't about, you know, the reaction. It was about actually the leadership of it. And it was funny. I didn't, I didn't really realize it. Like when I posted that up, it was, you know, it was not a leadership post to me. It was a, you know, Hey, come on, that's, that's all be better post, you know? Yeah. But it's great. Some of those raw, honest, more authentic moments are, are our best, aren't they? Yeah. Sometimes I got to watch with the raw and authentic. I, I mean, there's been times, <laughs> I've, been times I've typed stuff out on that. I'm like, nah, hang on a second. I'm like, all right, let me just, let me just, <laughs> let me dial this back a second. Right. But, um, but yeah. yeah, you know, I, I think, Showing who we are is important to our teams, you know, and in the good and bad. And I've posted about, I have, you know, in that journey on LinkedIn for me has been interesting. You know, when I first yeah. started, it was all about um, connections and who I could be a, a client with and who I could network with. And, you know, just a very, if you want to say revenue driven. Mm-hmm. And then it slowly became almost like this thing for me that's almost like therapeutic where yeah. I, you know, I just post about what's happening a little bit um, and, and just kind of put myself out there. And, uh, and that's been interesting because the more I've done it, I've seen people actually on my team get to know me a little bit better through LinkedIn you yeah. know, as well. So it's been, that's it's been an interesting piece. You know, that's something that came up in conversation today with one of my teams. We've got a lot of employees particularly in our staffing organization at PTS, a lot of employees that are out in the field that we don't get to see all the time. And we said, today we've got video. So whether it's on LinkedIn or whether we're putting it on our company app, you can be having conversations, showing some vulnerability, showing who, you're up, who you are, who your family are, what you like to do at the weekends, what you're trying to do at work. And you can create this connectivity now without actually spending one-on-one time with people. And that that's a... That's a bit of a game changer for teamwork. Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Like, I mean, I can, I'm, I can remember way back, you, you know, yeah. when the conference call was even like, you know, it, you're all gathered around a phone, you know, like, I mean, you didn't have like the speaker phone in the middle of the table, right? And then you had yeah. that. When, well, now, you know, one day it was a big deal that we could see the four offices on camera, like, you know, it, it was like. You know, like we invented fire or something. And, <laughs> you know, now we have now we have this to the point where a Zoom call is just that's the norm, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I was in staffing, I used to go visit everybody and used to be that's how we kind of secured the contract and secured everything. And it was it, it was everything was in person. And now every, you know, everything I do is a zoom call and Mm -hmm. that's it, you know, and, and, and we kind of joke about it after, if there is a follow-up call, I go, Hey, can I just call you on your cell? Like the old days? And they go, yeah, we don't need a zoom, you know? So it's even your, the, even though the connection you make with your clients is different, your team is different. Everything is, is just changed now because we have increased technology and everybody has a different take on that in terms of, how they treat that and you know where it fits into their their establishment of trust with you as a person Mm -hmm. yeah there's some there's some upsides there's also some downsides Mm -hmm. um if you if you think back to your early part of your career in the military where a lot of time is spent together and Mm -hmm. whether it's training or exercises or whatever it might be in the field um what is it that you think was great about teamwork back then that we're missing today in this more virtual electronic era? Man, that's a, that's such a good question. Um, this may sound very just rudimentary, but there's something about sweating together. There's something about doing a physical challenge together that brings a team together. You know, and you always see these like corporate camps where you go out and you kind of like climb the ropes together and you do stuff together. I think that's what it that's a lot of what it is. I didn't really realize it until like later in my career that that's what a big part. The moments of my career that I remember the most were the hardest physically. Mm -hmm. And 
those were also the times when the team was probably the most together because we were all either freezing somewhere or, yeah. you know, it's, it's 4 a.m. And, and we'd you know, been up for 28 hours. And the only way to get on that plane home was to clean up everything and, and you know, get it done. Um, you know, but I think there's something about being in person and doing something, you know, physically together that kind of bonds you as a, as a, as a team. And I'm not yeah. sure what it is. I, I'm not smart enough on the psychology of it, but I do think there's something there that kind of has a, a piece of it, you know, like even playing paintball together, you went out yeah. there and, you know, you did something, you kind of ran around together, you shot, I don't want to, maybe you shot each other in different teams. I don't know, but you did something of that nature physically. And it's, it just kind of brings you together a little bit. It does. It's funny you mentioned paintball. A team I was running years ago, we got together in Orlando and we went and did this paintball. And we had people from yeah. Mexico, Canada, the US, Brits, all sorts of different walks of life. And uh, um, we got out there on this paintball range and people became different, <laughs> different animals. This one really quiet, reserved guy, he's like French Legion or something. He's climbing through ditches and climbing up over walls and just getting people when they least expect it. And it created so much camaraderie, everyone sitting in the bar afterwards yeah. and sharing a few bruises too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's always a few of there's always a few of that. And 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 what was funny is that I remember in those times that like in it, it was like the run, right? And I still remember it. It was like it was like St. Patrick's weekend. Now St. Patrick's weekend in Savannah is a big deal. Right. Yeah. So we had a every Friday, the military, I think to this day, it's one of those things that will never go away. Every Friday is usually like this big unit run. And it's usually at a, like a slower pace. And it's kind of more fun. And it's more of that team building, and a little bit of sweat, but not not too bad. Well, yeah. for this one, it was a Friday. And Thursday night was kind of like the start of St. Patrick's weekend. So everybody was a little bit like, oh, it's Friday. Ha you know, you know, fun day, you know, Friday, we're all kind of there. And our boss decided to go, hey, you know what we're going to do? Let's go a little bit harder today. Let's see how let's see how hard we can go, but yet still stay as a group. Well, what was interesting was in the beginning, we're like, what in the, you know, like, hey, you know, come on, like, that's not fair. This is this is dumb. This is whatever. But about halfway through, there was a sense of like pride. Then it became, hey, look at us. And now, hey, we can do this. And, and, the, and, the, and the other, everybody else is like on a slow pace. And we're the ones running fast. And all of a sudden yeah. now, we're the ones, you know, it was, you know, as a team doing it. And there was no more complaining. It was, it was more of, you know, hey, look what we just did. And, and that's what the boss came out and said. And, and he was like, you know. He's like, always challenge yourself. And he goes, I know y'all went out last night. He goes, I know we're on. He goes, I get it. He goes, but challenge yourself and look what you did. And I, I remember that. And it was a, it was a great, you know, I was a, I was a younger in my career. And I, I remember saying, man, that's a really good lesson. So. It is a good lesson. And it, and it shows the importance of teamwork that, and I have that experience too. I'm much easily, much more easily challenged. Sorry much more willing to accept the challenge when I'm doing it as part of a team than mm -hmm. if it's just myself because you can easily negotiate with yourself. Oh, yeah. But it's it's hard to negotiate with a team of people if you feel like you're letting them down. Well, I mean, that's going to like the gym, right? Or, yeah. I mean, you know, that you know that's like, you know, Peloton and they link in your bike to somebody else, you know, so now I can exercise in my house. Yes, convenience, but now I'm, I'm pedaling it against either a stranger or I'm pedaling against a friend. And now yeah. I have this, you know, competition, but it's a little teamwork. You know, it's, it's no different than the Apple watch is connected and I can, I can show how many calories I did versus you. It's the same. It's the same piece. If I'm connected with somebody in, in a challenge, then I'm more apt to go do it. than let my little voice inside my head tell me that it's okay. I'll, I'll get two workouts in tomorrow and some crazy yeah. idea that I have that, you know, it's not going to happen. Right. So it's, it's all, it's all really the same. It's, it's, 
you know, can I build a team and can I build a community in, in some form or fashion? Co- competition. I like the way you brought that up. So a lot of people think about teamwork as everyone working together, row in the same direction, but actually there's value in competition amongst team members. That's, that's mm-hmm. what helps us drive each other along a bit. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned Peloton. I was thinking the other day, my wife came in, I'm doing the intervals and arms workout on the Peloton and there's this guy and he's way out ahead of me. And I'm like, right, I'm going to drop the weights now. I'm just going to get up and just power for the next, you know, 10 minutes. And I'm going to try and catch that guy. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't have done it if, if he wasn't out there ahead of right. me kind of setting that target. That's right. So it's, it's a pretty cool concept, competition in teams. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. And that's something that I didn't get. You don't really get it in the military because it's hard to, there's, you know, you're, you, you're kind of all one. Right. It's mm-hmm. really it's hard to separate yourself away, you know, like the the physical challenges. Yes. And like even the evaluations, you're, you're kind of you're kind of in there. Right. Now, there's some people that, that definitely separate themselves. No doubt. Right. I have you know, there's 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 people you can identify early on in, in their career and go, he's separate. You know, yeah. Well, what, when you get in the corporate world. And what I loved about being in sales and the, the real reason I went back to it was that now there's a number. Now I can say, okay, it's, you can say what you want about skills and everything else, maybe, but there's a number right there that says on this month, I was in third or fourth or first or whatever it was. Yeah. And the fact that I can be on a team and we really compete. We really go after each other in terms of that number one spot, but yet in the same breath, I can go to that person and say, man, how do I write this email to this client? How do I, you know, hey, can you listen to my recording and tell me what I did, you know, off here? Can you, you know, is there something I'm doing wrong? That in my mind is where you have a great team. That's that's yeah. what will propel companies way higher when you can compete hard and yet help each other in the same day same breath then that's really good i love that actually that makes me think of a third c you've said competition you said collaboration helping each other with uh, an email or a sales Mm -hmm. call Mm -hmm. and if you add a third one celebration Mm -hmm. you compete you collaborate and you celebrate that there's some real glue there man if you want to say that one of the one that I'm not good at, it's a celebrate. I that's yeah. always been one that I have. I always have someone on my team that I kind of designate and go, "Hey, can you remind me to celebrate?" And they and they're and they're always, you know, like I just get lost in the. Well, there's always the next day. There's always the next, you know, candidate, yeah. right? In staffing, there's always the next job order, and taking that moment to say no. We're going to go have a happy hour together and celebrate, you know, what June was. Um, yes. And that's a big, it's a big deal. I, I have to remember it and I always struggle with it. It's always one that I designate someone on my team to go, please remind me of this because I'm going to get caught up in the, in this wheel, right? That always goes around yeah. and, and never really stops and to celebrate it, even on an individual basis. You know, I, I have my wife of 20 years who is the person who reminds me, you know, Hey, yeah, great job. Time to celebrate. We're going to go celebrate, you know, and, and, and do this. So yeah, that's, I've, a, I've got the same key. problem. I've got the same problem. And it's something that I like your, your point, maybe asking someone on the team to prompt mm-hmm. you that, Hey, we've got to go celebrate or creating a routine. There was a company I worked for once and we used to work in four week periods because you get 13 four-week periods in a year rather than 12 months. So they used to mm. squeeze a bit more sales out of us. <laughs> and uh, and so every fourth Friday routine, you all go to the bar, the whole company. Sure. You go to the bar and the, the regional director puts his card behind and he's like, let's celebrate. And mm. uh, you really look forward to that fourth Friday. Mm-hmm. And you'd, you'd run into someone and say, hey, I saw your numbers this month. That was awesome. Or, wow, I can't believe you broke that account. How'd you do it? And mm-hmm. there was a lot of camaraderie that came through that. Yeah. And there's, and there's always, I think of, I think maybe a lot of people think of, of celebrate. It's like, the, you know, the big win or the, the big account or, you know, what you did for number one. 
that celebrate can be to that that person in number six who just yeah. broke through their personal you know ceiling or as a team you had a bad month yes but you know what you implemented a new process or you did there's something different you're, you're doing as a team that we can celebrate you know yeah. and I think that's important like even and I've been on teams that have been you know have struggled at times and then we've we've come up and like what we found was on the months we, if you got into a routine of celebrating, then you found things to feel good about. And then it, it kind of has momentum. And now you feel good about a few things, even though you had a few hiccups, you feel good. And then you keep going. And, you know, again, you said it, the importance of celebrating those wins is really important and it's just something i'm not i'm not great at um but i i know it and i will either like literally put a sticky down or tell somebody hey you know help me here yeah definitely we talked uh you know before we started this today we talked a little bit about family as teams um and, and there was some great conversation on that topic. But when you think about celebrating with the team at work versus celebrating with the team at home, do you find it any different? Do you find it a bit easier to celebrate with the team at home when, you know, someone makes a more obvious, you know, rite of passage or whatever it might be? No, I'm still bad. I'm still bad at celebrating. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I am. Yeah. Like, and again, I have my wife that's just, uh, she, she's the person that, that just really keeps me grounded. And I have, and I've posted about this a little bit on LinkedIn. I think I've talked to you about it, right? I, I will, that work-life balance, if there ever is one, yeah. my pendulum always swings a little bit to the work, you, you know? Yeah. So I have to find a find time or make time, right. Or, you know, carve out time, whatever you want to say in, in terms of family. Um, and then the celebrate is also, I think as I've gotten older, I've I've also realized how quickly time goes. And yeah. your kids, you know, my kids now are 18 and 16. I am two years away from them being gone. You know, one goes off to college and I'm, you know, one's two years away and they are independent. And I I know how this goes. I was the same way. I drew a circle around my house of about five hours and I was going to school <laughs> outside of that. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, they're not doing that. I think mom has said, hey, no, no, that's, that's, you know, but, um, you know, I, I still think it's, it's still tough, but I, it's still the same dynamic um, to just, there's certain moments you don't want to lose and, and you want to make sure you, you capture them because they're gone, you know, and, yeah. and, and that's what I'm, I'm realizing more and more as, as, as the kids get older that, you know, there's just certain moments that you really want to celebrate and you really want to, you know, take in and, and, and just live and be in that moment because it's gone, you know? Yeah, it is. That's some moment of time. Yeah. I'm definitely feeling a little bit of that myself. In fact, uh, I turned 40 last year. Another one of my friends just turned 40 in February and, uh, they, another buddy who we all went to college with in, in England of all places, they came out here to California, <laughs> pardon me, and we all got together and did a little road trip back in February. And I was like, man, where did those 20 years go? Yeah. Just flew by. And it was yeah. cool to be getting together, catching up, celebrating the 40th, but also celebrating that we've all kind of made it <laughs> to a point of having, you know, wives, families, um, our health. We still enjoy surfing. It was, it was a good moment. <laughs> you know, I mean – you know, for all the things that you, you know, when I left the staffing company and I came to Seamless and I transitioned teams, I only changed jobs a few times in my life. And switching teams to me is, is scary, you know, because yeah. the amount of time you spend at work, man, you better pick the right team or, 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 or you know, that's just not going to be a fun experience. Um you know, but what I got reminded of again is that there's a constant team. You know, I can switch mm -hmm. teams at work, you know, and do all my stuff. And, and this work from home and technology, you know, has changed a little bit because now for the first time I'm work from home. Yeah. And, you know, I step outside of, 
you know, my bonus room slash office here. And, you know, I'm into dad, you know, so if that deal went bad, if it's a bad week, a bad month, whatever it is, you know, my team downstairs doesn't care, you know, yeah. you know, they want dad and, you know, and I transition roles and I'm on that team and that team is celebrating report cards and, you know, varsity letters and all that stuff. And I'm, you know, so I have to transition my, you know, kind of my psyche a little bit. Um, and I can't carry that over. And, and, and that's something that, again, I had to learn in the, in the work from home space. I had to learn that. Um, yeah. and, and that became, you know, interesting. I, you know, my, again, I'll say it again. My wife said, Hey, I hear you. You can vent to me, but like you come down, man, your dad. I'm like, yeah, all right. I got it. You're right. You know? So it's, you have a constant, you know, and the constant for me is that team with family. Yeah. No, for me too. The family's always been a big, a big anchor uh, in a positive way. Kind of gives me, gives me something to stay grounded with, like you said earlier. And, uh, and to really work for um, making the time for family is 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 really important too. I try and go uh, overboard with the silliness, the goofiness, because I'm like Mr. Serious at work. So I got to come home and just let it all out. I would say let my hair out. There, not much up there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. When you think you said work life balance there, and there's this whole movement around work life integration, and some days I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. Um, you know, sitting on on vacation on your laptop, it, some people might call it integration. Some people might call it a a workaholic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, who knows? But you're working for a, a software company now that's bringing mm -hmm. some pretty cool AI to play, and mm -hmm. we're going to continue to see AI, robotics, and other technologies. Mm -hmm help people become more efficient in the world of work. Mm -hmm. What what are your sort of hopes and dreams for teamwork in that dichotomy of in the professional life and in the personal life? I hope we never lose the element, you know, that we're humans and that we have feelings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's easy to forget that. And you can say it in a text or an email or, you know, and now you're in zoom or a Slack channel. And, you know, um, there's another person, there's a real person, you know, I mean, that's not just an image and a, and a, and a figure that's a, you know, that's a human. And I, and I think that to me will always be the element of teamwork is that, <laughs> we all have to understand that we are humans and, and being humans mean I'm going to have emotions on some day and I'm going to have, you know, ups and downs in my energy levels. And I'm going to have, you know, these crazy decisions that I try and make good decisions all the time, but you know what, it's just sometimes I may make a bad one. And I don't think automation can replace that. I, I mean, I, I mean, at some point of time to be on a team, you have to have, a real connection with the people that you're with or it. Yeah. I and mean, that's the goal. Now you can automate yeah. a lot of things, but in the end, um, you really have to have that connection. And, and what's interesting to me was we were in the pandemic when I interviewed for seamless here mm -hmm. and I had always interviewed face to face. We always had that eye to eye connection in terms of, you know, the trust, and I, I can sit across from, from somebody and get a really good feel and just understand if I trust them or not, because yeah. this is my career and I, and I want to learn and I want to grow. And obviously it was a, it was a W2. And this was the first job where I didn't do that. I, I, I just had a zoom call and I really had to really take a step back and go, okay, what I, what did I get? And is that enough for me to, you know, to trust? Um, you know, and that's all, that's all part of it. I think we can work remote and we can do a lot of automation, but in the end, there's gotta be some human connection to where we trust each other to, and then we can go back. We can go back to automation yeah. and being in Zoom, but there's, you know, how often you come together as a team to do those celebrations and that silly stuff and the kind of bond and a physical activity or something. Um, there's got to be an element of that. You, you you can't get rid of that entirely. Yeah, it's it's interesting 
that whole concept of interviewing through Zoom and how to stay human, it won't be too far until the technology lets us, you know, you think back to Star Trek when they could go into those rooms that would mm-hmm. all of a sudden become a jungle and they're going on these exercises together. Mm-hmm. It, there's an argument to say soon we'll be able to put in our goggles and our special suits that give us these real look and feel and touch experiences and and maybe we can sweat together. Who knows? I I went to see a client who was into the, the virtual reality and augmented reality and they took us on a tour. It was absolutely mm-hmm. – I didn't get to put on the, the stuff. It was very – it was like behind glass. Like, no, no, you can't. Yeah. You, you're not going to touch that. But it, they did show us this thing, and I, I had never seen it before. But it was like this little, small robot. It was probably three foot, three and a half foot tall, and you yeah. could log into the robot, and then the screen would be like this, and the robot would go to the person's office like it was you, except you're on the wow. screen. And I thought about that and I was like, well, like, I'm trying to understand. I was like, well, can't you just do a Zoom and bring and have the same thing? But in this case, it was like somebody was walking into your office and saying, okay, I'm here. And it was, yeah, it was, it was a just physical. your face. Yeah. And like, it just took me back and I was like, man, is that where we're, is that where we're going? I mean, I mean, is that. You know, to the point where, you know, hey, hopping on a huddle on Slack or hopping on a Zoom call, that you know, that's, you know, now it's, you know, the robot would show or you put on your glasses and, you know, hey, Dane is there in full, you know, he's there in full in what I perceive on my glasses as full, you know, physical stature, but he's not really there. Maybe, yeah. you, you know, it's I, I, I just hope that in all of that, we still remember there's a human there you know, and that we don't lose that human element. Yeah, no, me too. I was listening to a podcast with my daughter the other day on AI and the future. Uh, and I said, what did you think afterwards? She's nine. And she was like, I don't like it. She was like, I was like, why don't you like it? And she goes, well, if AI really takes over, where will the humans be? And she was like straight onto it. And they didn't actually talk about that in the podcast, but Mm-hmm. You can see her, her her gears returning. So there is an importance for us to, even as the technology continues to improve, to keep that human connection, as you say, really yeah. central. Yeah. And, that, and I think the, I went to a conference and they talked about, you know, they put up a picture of a family <laughs> and it was from like, I was oh, like early 1900s, you know, like 1905 or, you know, something like that. And I forget what year, but it said, hey, does anybody know who who the mom is in this picture? And the whole you know, audience was like, no. And they're like, well, that was the first um, fatality of a traffic accident. Oh. And they said, but that hasn't changed technology. And the cars have come and, and now, you know, and now we're progressing. And mm-hmm. then they you talked about you know, kind of technology with the cars, you know, that are going to be automated. And they were like, if you think that's not coming, it's coming and it's going yeah. to be here. And then they you know, went in to talk other technology and such, but it was a very drastic or a very clear picture of technology doesn't wait. You know, technology will no. keep progressing and it will progress faster and faster as we get you know, more into it. And, you know, I tell my kids all the time, I don't, I don't think they'll be driving. I don't think they'll have driver's licenses in their lifetime. I think they will be, I think it'll be fully automated and it'll, you know, heck it may be illegal to drive a car, right? Because that's a human element and not technology. Yeah. I think it's, I've actually, one of my advisors the other day, we were talking about and going back to fatalities on the road and, and other things we were saying that the cars of the future will be so smart that they'll see what's coming. They'll talk to each other, the cars, yeah. and they'll be like, Hey, I need to get past. And oh, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's not actually that wild a concept. No. Um, so I can see that happening. It, it's funny, you know, with that speed of technology, innovation and acceleration, I think, and this is what I said to my nine-year-old daughter that doesn't like AI. I said, 
we can't bury our heads in the sand because it will keep marching forward. So mm-hmm. let's let's embrace it. Let's find the technologies that might let us spend a bit more time together this mm-hmm. week or mm-hmm. might let us have more um, connection with, with workers or community mm-hmm. members or learn something new. But we've kind of, we can't hide from it. I think, I actually think the world can become, and particularly the world of work and teams can become better if we get the right technologies and we use them in the right way. We're probably just all a little bit, a little bit flooded and fatigued by how much change we've gone through and and how early some of that tech is. A lot of it still breaks. Yeah, the I'm I am fascinated by this generation that we're going to have coming behind us. Yeah, who went through the pandemic, who has has now seen technology, has now seen a world that. You know, depending on what age, you know, my kids understand I went to work, I went to work. Now, you know, for the most part, you know, it's a lot of work from home. My kids look at this and go, I'm not, I'm not going to an office. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing that, you know, and how they embrace technology. I mean, that's not a new concept. I mean, younger kids grasp on the technology so quickly and, you know, and, and what's that going to look like? You know, I think it's going to be really fascinating to see how this whole time period, this last three, four, five years of pre-pandemic, pandemic time, post-pandemic, and mm-hmm. technology that has supported it, how they're going to, I mean, I think they're going to adapt to it a lot quicker. And I think new technologies will be mainstream much quicker than what yeah. you and I experience right now. I think you're right. I think it's definitely there, and there's there's so many there's so many more use cases, so many more users who are willing to be those early adopters now, mm-hmm. and it's more affordable. So yep. you're going to see there's a lot of stuff going on, but you're going to see what floats to the top pretty mm-hmm. quickly, mm-hmm. Um, which is which is exciting. So as you look out, uh, Dave, and you think about where Seamless AI is at and where your career is at, what's your what's your sort of big focus next? six months, two years, where do you think uh, you guys will be making the biggest impact in, in teamwork? And teamwork, you know, I mean, we're growing, you know, that's public out there. I mean, I mean, we're, yeah. we're hiring and it's, it's fascinating to me, like on cultures, a culture of a company, you know, and who you <laughs> hire and then how you, you know, how you adapt them into your, into your culture, you know, into your, into your rhythms, you know, and, and, and how that, how that plays out. You know, I, I love teaching. I, I love, I love, you know, sharing some of my experience with, you know, the team and, and having that, you know, having that, you know, that bond, if you will, of, of teaching and then seeing them use it. I get the biggest thrill, not out of my wins, on you know my side and and i still do accounts i still do meetings i do all of that um but i get the biggest thrill out of out of when my team wins and yeah and and that to me like seeing someone who's new to the account executive role to come in to learn it adapt it and then and get a win and you can see the confidence and you can see the you can see it grow and i've I've now been here enough to where they are now becoming leaders and they're now becoming team leads and such like that. And now they're learning leadership of, of what it means in certain situations. And, you know, it's, it's so much fun. That's what I, yeah. always, you know, people just ask and, and say, well, what's it like? And I go, it's just fun. I just come to work. I have fun. I'm around great people. Um, and it's, it's just been an absolute pleasure to come to work and just, learn so much. I mean, I'm two years into software Sarah's. I'm a, I'm a rookie. Like I am a, I'm a baby, you know, in, in yeah. terms of software sales. And I'm just, I come and learn every day and, you know, but I, I enjoy, you know, spreading what I can in terms of knowledge of sales as well to my team. Yeah. And just that wisdom and life experience, particularly when you say you're dealing with early career SDRs and that type of thing, there's a lot there's a lot that they stand to gain from sort of your insights and experiences. I mean, I'm so jealous. They have their entire career ahead of them. They have, yeah, 
they have, I mean, they're just soaking and you can see it. They're soaking it all in. Um, and it's just, I'm like, man, I'm two years into this at, you know, I, I turned 50 last year and I was like, man, I'm two years into this. I was like, you guys are, you know, 24, 25, 27, whatever it is. I, I was like, you, have, you have the entire, the entire runway ahead of you, you know, and it's, it's really just fun to kind of, you know, be a sounding board for different ideas and to share some experiences and then, you know, learn together too. Like I'm still learning with yeah. them, you know, from folks in the company and we learn together, you know, so it's, it's just fun. I mean, I tell people, they ask me all the time what it's like, it's seamless. And I go, it's just fun. It's just a fun time. That's so cool. I'm so glad for you, Dave. And uh, it's, I think that's a great outlook on the future of teamwork, fun and learning. Because if you're, if you're always make- learning, if you're always learning and you keep it fun, you know what? You won't burn out. You won't have a bad team. You know, you may not, you know, as long as you get better every day, then you're okay. You know, and, yeah. and, and that's what I that's why I try and tell my team. That's why I try and tell my kids. You know, that's why I try and that's the hardest thing is telling myself that, right? Is uh, all right, come on, you know, let's learn something today. You know, yeah. and it's easy to forget that on yourself. You can say it, and then you look around and go, wait, you know, did I learn something today? Am I having fun? You know, that goes back to that celebration and a whole a whole lot of stuff like that. So this is good sound, Jane. I mean, I really yeah, you know, before we take off, you know, thank you for this. This has been, this has been, uh, you know, really helped me think about a lot of things on teamwork and leadership that I haven't thought about in a while, man. So thank you for this. No, thank you. You're a natural. I mean, if I, if I summarize, there are a few really poignant points through this last 47 minutes of conversation. I, I love the way you opened up on teamwork's all about trust and, and mission. Because if you've got those, you've got a lot of togetherness. I thought that was awesome. I loved referring back to what you learned in your military days on sweating together really drives. It, it's the cement, the glue in teams. I thought that was super cool. And, and the way you introduced that concept of competition in teams, which led us on to talking about collaboration and, and celebration. Um, th- there's just been so much that's come up. It's been great. And that those final two points, fun and learning. like. If that's all we ever, if at the end of every day we check off and say, did I have fun and did I learn something today? Teams are going to go great. (laughs) There it is. There it is. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for joining me today, Dave. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Awesome.